It's pretty ironic to speak about a well-renowned ninja, considering that ninjas acted in secrecy and needed to maintain that secrecy in order to protect themselves. It seems almost counterintuitive for a ninja to become famous or well-known enough that outsiders could piece together information about their life. This is why there are so few known ninjas in history, but of course, there are some exceptions to that rule, as we've seen with Hattori Hanzo for example. But if there's anything rarer than a ninja, it's probably a female ninja. The only recorded female ninja in history appears to be Mochizuki Chiyom, who has since been described as a lethal agent who operated during the feudal era, a time where bloodshed was pretty much an everyday occurrence. But along with the clans declaring war on each other, and Daimyo flexing at one another to see who blinked first, there was another conflict waging in the shadows, one that was led by spies, assassins, and what you could indeed call ninjas. But like I've covered in other videos, we know that ninjas served various samurai lords, some of them having a more honourable bond, and others merely serving for money. In a sense, some ninjas were merely mercenaries, selling their skills to the highest bidder. But Mochizuki Chiyo wasn't born into any particular ninja clan. Her earliest notable event seems to be the marrying of Moritoki, a member of the powerful Takeda clan and nephew to the clan leader, Takeda Shingen. It was during this time that the Takeda clan were warring with the Yusegi and Tokugawa clan for the main Japanese island known as Honshu. But Takeda Shingen was under the threat of assassination quite often, whereby his own entourages would be infiltrated by spies and riddled with traitors. So he set to work in creating his own network of spies so as to haunt his own control over his own men and to also weed out the rotten ones. This network of spies would also be tasked with infiltrating the enemy to learn secrets and potential strategies to battle. But unfortunately for Mochizuki, her husband Moritoki died on the battlefield in 1561 in a possible skirmish with the Tokugawa clan. Struck with grief, Mochizuki was approached by Takeda Shingen, who you might say took advantage of her emotional state and offered her revenge. He would grant her the role of seeking out information on their enemies, setting her on a path whereby she would establish a network that Takeda Shingen had always envisioned. Whether she was guided by Takeda in her efforts is unclear, though it is unlikely that Takeda would have had the time to invest in the cultivation of her role. Mochizuki would disguise herself as a charitable noblewoman, seeking out to do good amongst the land riddled with so much evil. It's through this act that she was said to draw in those who were lost and were looking for something or someone to believe in, in a time where blood and chaos presided over all. Having established something of a flock, she would set up her own ninja academy that was disguised as a religious school for underprivileged girls, these such girls being the main group in which she attracted. She would travel around Koga and other nearby provinces in search of those who would join her ninja entourage. Under the guise of a rich noblewoman seeking to do good, she would visit villages and towns that had been pillaged by marauding samurais, otherwise known as ronin. She would take orphaned girls under her wing, promising them safety and sanctuary in a time where they would so desperately need it. Once recruited, she would lead them back to her school, whereby her tequila funded associates would grant them a formal education. Not a bad deal if you ask me. However, they were also said to be taught in the art of spying, infiltration, sabotage, and even taught how to kill a man in the quickest way. Once Mochizuki was happy with the progress each girl made, they were sent off into the street to infiltrate settlements controlled by the Takeda enemies. A lot of you are probably picturing a group of women in tight black leathers and dark cows skittering across rooftops and backflipping left and right. But in actuality, these particular girls were taught to be spies first and assassins second. To be quite honest, in order to infiltrate certain social groups, ninjas would need to blend in with their target and would try to shy away from anything that would draw attention to themselves for fear of compromising their own identity or intentions. So wearing all black and darting across rooftops and doing somersaults and casting at semi weren't exactly things a ninja would want to do as it would draw too much attention. But going back to Mochizuki's band of female ninjas, they were taught how to hide in plain sight and how to roleplay in order to fit a certain character for certain situations. They were taught the art of seduction most prominently, for what faster way to a man's head than through his pens. They were also taught what to look for once they were close to an enemy, as well as how to record and smuggle information and even how to withstand torture. Mochizuki's women would disguise themselves in a variety of different roles, 
most notably barmaids who were likely to hear the spilling of secrets after soldiers had a few drinks, or courtesans who would be privy to more intimate conversations given the nature of their role. Others infiltrated the households of Daimyo as servants, where they would be able to move around the enemy lord's house freely in search of information and secrets. Some would even marry enemy samurai after pretending to be high esteemed noblewomen. Many took on the guise as priestesses and nuns, allowing them to travel between settlements unburdened, as well as giving them the opportunity to hear the confessions of enemies. Due to the patriarchal society of feudal Japan, women were not considered as threats in the affairs of war, and so this allowed Mochizuki's women to successfully disrupt operations for years without ever being suspected. They would become so successful at what they did that Takeda Shingen began winning more and more battles. It can't be said for certain what information allowed Shingen to win which battle, but the man was standing toe to toe with Oda Nobunaga at one point, and even defeated the combined forces of Nobunaga and Tokugawa at the Battle of Mikatagahara. The dude was clearly doing something right. In fact, Rumours would soon begin to spread through the Yusegi and Tokugawa camps that there were female demons pouncing through the land with hexes and black magic. By the end of 1573, where Takeda Shingen had either supposedly died of cancer, or some unnamed disease, or perhaps killed by a long-range marksman in his camp, Mochizuki would have around 300 women working for her, as spies and assassins. When Takeda Shingen was announced dead, Mochizuki and her band of ninjas would seem to vanish from the record. There's a great deal of speculation as to what Mochizuki Chiyom's fate was, where some say she was killed by Tokugawa forces after she tried to avenge Shingen's death. Others say that the other lords of the Takeda clan were not as sold on the idea of having women running about getting their hands dirty in the same way Shingen was, and so either dissolved the ninja clan or had them all killed. Another theory is that Mochizuki understood that she could no longer operate without Shingen's guidance and chose to dissolve the clan before retreating to a life of peace. Another more insidious idea is that Mochizuki had a falling out with Shingen, and this would lead her to sneak poison into Shingen's camp, whereby she or one of her women would apply a lethal dose to him. The marksman I mentioned earlier, who some say was responsible for the shooting and killing of Shingen, could very well have been Mochizuki herself, having snuck her way through the camp, or just as easily, one of her women. But what do you guys think? What was the fate of Mochizuki Chiyom and her band of ninja women? Did she fade out into the shadows to live her life out to the fullest? Or was she in too deep, struggling against the Tokugawa uprising that would soon dominate Japan? Maybe she did kill Takeda Shingen, considering the details around his death are more mysterious to say the least. As always, if you've liked this video, be sure to hit it with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In our next video, we'll be talking about the man himself, Takeda Shingen. Until the next time guys.